The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the call with your host, Todd Walters. Welcome, Platinum members, Platinum members, Inside Sales Agents. Uh, this is going to be an interesting call today. Now, uh, I say this every time we, we, we get on these Inside Sales Training uh, calls that, hey, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is it right here. And this will change your business. If you can get really, really good at making these calls and converting these leads to appointments, uh, your business will soar. Uh, whether you're the inside sales agent or the team leader making the calls yourself or an outside guy and you're returning the leads, it doesn't matter. If you can get really good at conversion, you know, in quick, efficient use of it, you know, given the opportunities, uh, you'll soar. So, um, it, uh, I actually have, we actually have on the call today, um, James McDonald. James, are you there? Yes, I am. How are you doing, Todd? Doing great, doing great. Listen, I appreciate you jumping on the call. Now, you've been, uh, you've been doing this for quite some time, you know, with the coaching programs, training people and role plan, using the, uh, the universal mm -hmm. callback scripts and, and dealing with these leads uh, for a long time. And uh, am I right? Is this kind of where the... Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, um, how it all started off was, uh, was using a predictive dialer and doing cold calling for Craig about uh, 15 years ago. So the way that this script has evolved and, you know, as you're talking about getting good at making these calls and really maximizing the time, if you're going to sit down and make calls for a couple of hours, it only makes sense that you be good at it, um, you know, is, is something that's, although it's evolved over years, it is absolutely perfected. That script, that universal callback script and every word in it has been changed and crafted specifically over these years to the, to the point that it's at right now. Right, so that's, um, and you make a good point there because I talk to my, you know, my team and, and we're training on this and many times uh, begin to deviate from the actual script itself and start inserting your, you know, your own words or your, kind of your own way of doing things. And then the results aren't really that good. And, of course, then we turn around and want to blame the, blame the script when in reality we're not even following it. Right. That's, and that, that's a really good point. You know, one of the things that Craig says all the time, he, he talks about imitate before innovate. And so, so before you go and, and you want to, quote, improve the script, become perfect at following it exactly. And once you do that, then you can make the call as to whether you want to change anything. But what we find is that once you've really mastered the script the way it is, you won't want to change it. You won't want to deviate from anything that's there because it works so effectively for you. All right, now. Um, what do you see since you've um, you know been training guys for a long time on this, and obviously you're pretty good at it. You could probably do it in your sleep. I'm sure you dream about it each night, rather. Absolutely. You've you've got me pegged. <laughs> All right. So uh, what are the what are some of the one, two, maybe three biggest problems you know that inside sales agents have or agents have when when uh, when making these calls? Okay. Um, well, fortunately, this is something I talk about just about every day. So here's how I would divide up the biggest problems. First of all, the mindset of making these calls. For many of the inside salespeople especially, the mindset that they have is that their job is to try to convert every single prospect or person they're talking to on the phone into an appointment immediately. And that's not the concept, that's not the purpose of the call. The purpose of the call when you're picking up the phone should be that you want to determine the timing and the motivation of that prospect. And only if the timing and the motivation is appropriate, do you then want to convert them to an appointment. There's a big difference. Okay, so for a lot of you, it's, that's the mindset that you should have. I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to speak to this prospect. What I'm hoping to gain from them is some idea as to where they are in this, in, in, in this transaction or this hopeful transaction. You know? And if I determine that they represent now business and that there's motivation there, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make them an offer. But right, so, if so, the, hang on. so hang on. So – because um, I've, I've heard this on some of the training tapes that some of the insight is almost like the agents like listening to themselves talk. You know, they, they continue – once they have the motivation and timing, which sometimes can be established with uh, just two questions. Bingo. Uh, you know, they tend to keep talking or keep asking even more questions and really lose the opportunity to make the offer and, and make it compelling. Yeah, Todd, sure. this, is, this is Craig. 
Um, I, I find uh, I find a big mistake that the agents make it, uh, is just talk, talking way too much and mm -hmm. spending five minutes, ten minutes on the phone with each prospect. Uh, if you're listening to me making these calls, I'm on and off the phone in, in a couple minutes. Now, there's 60 minutes in an hour. So if I'm on and off the phone in, in two minutes, that means I can make 30 calls per hour. So with my inside salespeople, uh, one of the things I'm really trying to get them, uh, you know, to be disciplined in is, is following the script, not, not talking for five minutes with a prospect, especially a non-prospect. Um, I'm on and off the phone in two minutes, even if I have an appointment booked. Uh, mm -hmm. They're not speaking to enough people. If you're not speaking to enough people, you're not going to make enough money doing this. So you can be on and off the phone in a couple minutes. The person that controls uh, the conversation wins. And this is the analogy that I like to use with my inside sales staff. If I got in the ring with Mike Tyson, he would punch my head off. Okay, and that's the way it should be, right? He's the professional and I'm the amateur. Well, we need to be the professionals on the phone. We control the conversation. Uh, we're the experts. The prospect is the amateur. So you need to, the person that controls the conversation wins. And we're not making these phone calls to become their best friends. Uh, I don't want to talk about uh, their, you know, what kind of dog they have. Uh, I don't want to talk about um, uh, the improvements that they're making to their home. And that, might, that may seem harsh to you, but real estate is a numbers game. Uh, that's why we're, we're following this system. We understand that calling back warm leads is way more productive than cold calling. Okay, but bottom line, you need to pick up the phone and you need to follow the script to ask the prospects the right questions to determine their motivation and timing. Are they going to do it and when? And James, as you mentioned, we're not trying to do business with everybody. Right. And we're not trying to do business with everybody today. Uh, the prospects are going to fall into three categories, uh, James, and maybe you can talk about what those three categories are. Well, yeah, they're either going to represent now business where it's appropriate that we book an appointment with them immediately, whether that's a, a, a listing appointment, a buyer appointment, or they're going to represent future business where clearly they're going to be doing something. It's just going to be down the road. So we're going to offer to follow up with them at a later time, send them our free newsletter, um, and set a callback for half the time they indicate that they're going to be making their move. And the final category is they just don't represent any business at all. Which and if okay. that's the you don't, case, you don't try to force a square peg into a round hole. You move on. Absolutely not. When they say, well, you know, my wife is a real estate agent. I'll, I'll very likely use her. You say, thank you very much and have a great day. You know, James, we, James and I did a coaching call uh, this morning. It was one of the final coaching calls for this group. And, uh, uh, we, they had uh, emailed or faxed in their final scoreboards, Todd. And one of the things that, that I just find shocking is when we're interviewing these agents, the agents that had the greatest results in the coaching program, uh, the commonality was this is it's the agents that actually pick up the phone and call the leads. And they, they said that to us this morning, didn't they, James? That, yeah. You know, uh, everything turned around for me when I finally started to pick up the phone. I, I got past my fear of, of talking to people and I picked up the phone and I started to, to, uh, to use the, the script verbatim. I didn't change it. I just, you know, in some cases I just read it and that's where everything changed for me. And that's, you know, uh, where, when my production really started to take off. A couple of things I want to talk about this is first of all, um, you know, you, you got to call the leads. Okay. Uh, like calling them and being bad at it is better than not calling them at all. And the other thing that's, um, that keeps coming up over and over again is this fear of picking up the phone uh, especially those coaching members that had been engaged in any cold calling, you know, if they were part of Mike Ferry or they did any of that stuff prior to coaching, they associate picking up the phone with rejection. And the truth is, is you, you, you get very little rejection when you follow the script because you're, you're following up with warm leads, people that uh, have raised their hand and contacted us. So um, uh, quite a few of them said that this morning, James, that uh, mm -hmm. they were fearful, they were afraid to, to pick up the phone and make the calls. Um, another area I want to talk about today, uh, Todd, if this is okay with you, I want to talk about how most agents are absolutely dreadful when it comes to returning ad calls and sign calls. <laughs> uh, absolutely, most agents, um, you know, with the exception, I'm sure, of the people on this call, 
but most real estate agents are absolutely terrible when it comes to handling ad calls and sign calls. Now, let's all agree, first of all, with this point. 90% of the people that call you off of one of your houses, off of one of your listings, are going to eliminate that house once they have the information. Okay, I think everyone can accept that, right? That nine, nine out of ten sign calls or ad calls that you get, once the prospect gets the information on the property, they're going to disqualify it. They're going to tell you why that house is too big or too small, it's in the wrong location, it's too much money or whatever. Once they disqualify the house, they can't, they can't wait to get off the phone. I mean, they just want to get off the phone with you. Now, if you're a good realtor, you understand this, and you also understand uh, call conversion. You understand that these leads can be great leads. If you stop trying to focus on selling them the property that they called in on, and instead, if you offer them something of value, hopefully you can get these prospects that are obviously out there shopping for a house. They're further along in the purchase process. These should be good ones, right? They're driving around through neighborhoods, calling off of signs, or they're uh, looking in the real estate section or um, in the classified section under homes for sale, and they're calling you off of one of your property ads. So these are good leads, but only if you know what to do with them. Now, back in the old days, Todd, I became good at this because I used to take all of those inquiries just like you did. I don't anymore. I have my inside sales people uh, taking those inquiries, but um, I, I just, we, we really need to get everyone to understand um, what the flow chart looks like. Okay, when you're talking to somebody that calls in on one of your ads, okay, whether it's a sign call or an ad call, what the process should be. And, and the first thing that I always like to ask a prospect is I like to ask if they're calling for themselves. I don't know about you, Todd, but I've never made any money in 20 years of selling real estate if the prospect's calling in for brother, sister, friend, uncle, whoever. So, so, so how do you go about doing that? Uh, okay, well, let's do a quick role play, and I'll show you. Um, I'll, sh I'll just demonstrate this. Okay, uh, Todd has, um, back in the old days, uh, uh, Todd would uh, page me, and I would grab my cell phone, and I would call you back, and you'd be calling in on one of my listings. So ring, ring, may I speak to Todd? Yep, this is he. Hey, Todd, it's Craig Proctor with Remax. Uh, I received your page. You were calling in about my listing at 123 Main Street. Mm -hmm. Yep, I just wanted to get an idea of some of the some of the details, price. Okay, and are you calling for yourself, Todd? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, and uh, do you have an agent to help you find a home? No, we don't. Okay, now I want to get that out right away. And uh, uh, Victor, uh, on my team, uh, you're listening to this right now. Uh, that's something that uh, we want to get out there right away is we want to make sure that we, we determine whether they have a real estate agent or not. Okay, now, if they say they have a real estate agent, I'm going to ask them if they've signed a buyer agency agreement. You know, have you signed anything? Because if they haven't, perhaps I can still win that buyer over. If they have, if they say, yeah, I've, I've actually, I have an agent representing me, I've signed a buyer agency agreement, then I'm going to give them the information. My mindset is give them the information and get the heck off the phone. So I want to know whether this is somebody that I can convert from the onset. I want to know that. So I'm going to ask them, are you calling for, for yourself or a friend? No, are you calling for yourself? If, they, if the answer is yes, I'm going to continue on. If the answer is no, I just give them the information because I've never made any money from these leads if, they're not, if I'm not talking to the decision maker. Uh, and if they have an agent that they've signed a buyer agency agreement with, there's no use wasting any more time with this prospect. Just give them the price, the information they're looking for, and get off the phone. Far too many realtors spend you know, five, 10 minutes with the prospect before they determine that this prospect's never going to buy a house through them. So we, we can't waste our time. Now, let's look at some of the other questions that I'm going to ask Todd. I've asked him if he's calling for himself. He says he is. I ask, now I'm going to ask Todd, do you have an agent to help you find a home? So, now notice, I haven't given Todd any information yet, right? Okay, um, now um, I'm going to ask Todd if he owns a house or if he rents. Okay, right. and how are you going to respond to that, Todd? We actually own the home we live in now. Okay. All right, now I'm going to give him some of the information. Okay, I will give him some of the information on the, the house. Then I'm going to ask him, if he says he owns a home, whether he's looking to buy his next house before he lists his home or whether he'd like to list first. 
All right, so let me just ask you right there, Craig. So where in the process, it looks to me like maybe it's two or three questions is what you're allowing yourself before you have to give this buyer something to hold his attention. Is that right? Yeah, I'm, I want to get that information. First of all, I want to know whether they're calling for themselves. I want to know if they have an agent, okay? And I want to know if they own or if they rent. Because it's a lot better lead in my mind if they own a house here locally. Why? Because now it's not just a buyer, but it's a listing. Okay, then I'm going to trade some information. I'll give them some information. Maybe I'll give them the price or talk about some of the features. Then I'm going to come back with, um, with you know, are you interested in that home? And in most cases, the answer is no. Okay, now this I, I have I now uh, have decided this is somebody that I want to meet with. They're unattached. They're calling for themselves. They own a home here locally. This isn't the right house for them. So now I have to make a universal offer I, or I need to, I don't have to, I need to make a universal offer, something that this prospect wants so badly uh, in hopes of me getting them as a client. So what I would ask is, uh, what I would offer you now, Todd, is to email you all the homes that do match your criteria. I would let you know that uh, we're going to send you priority access to these new listings as soon as they come on the market. And our list includes any uh, distress sales, bank foreclosures, company-owned properties. It's a free service and you're never obligated to buy a home. So you can see we're just, we're just merging right into the universal fallback, call, call back script. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm, I'm setting up an appointment and we're going to get you signed to a buyer contract and you're going to buy something. So ad calls and sign calls represent great prospects if you know what to do with them. But uh, in, in too many cases, um, our agents eliminate these prospects. They tell them why the property that they're calling about is not a good fit, and that's the end of the conversation. Now remember, the prospect just wants to get the information and get off the phone. What we want to do is we want the prospect to answer our questions uh, so we can determine whether this is somebody that we're interested in, in meeting with, and then we want to make an amazing offer. An offer is so amazing that they're willing to, to meet with us to get what we offer. Craig, let me just interject as well here. One of, the, one of the other extreme benefits about this kind of a prospect is we know that at that moment that they responded to the sign or to the ad, that they are thinking about real estate. Their focus is on real estate and getting information about real estate at that moment. So what you're likely to find is that you're going to get a prospect who's more willing to share information with you than perhaps a prospect that maybe you're following up with two days later who called in and, you know, requested on your hotline or on your website, a list of properties. So arguably you would find it easier to convert this kind of a prospect and determine the timing and motivation of this kind of prospect than you would anyone else. Now, Todd, we, I have, I have typed out, um, how I handle ad calls and sign calls, and you've circulated that to all the Platinum members. Mm -hmm. Why don't we circulate it again after today's call? Okay. Okay, because I don't think um, I don't think everybody's using that. Yeah, there's um, two two things that um, that I know that uh, it's a problem is the concept of time. You know, if 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 your prime time calling hours are say five o'clock till nine o'clock, right? Say it represents four hours in the evening times. If you're spending a good bit of this time um, on the on the phone with people for uh, unnecessary periods of time, then there's going to be that, you're just going to run out of time at the end of the day and you just don't, you, you haven't had enough appointments booked. So it seems to be an ongoing problem where where one of the key things that you're saying right now, Craig, that uh, I, want, I want everybody on my team, everybody listening to really pay attention to is that right off the bat, you know, we find out whether we have the buyer on the telephone or whether it's somebody else's buyer, right? Is it the buyer that, that we can actually communicate with, we can actually work with, have a chance at an appointment with, or is it somebody else's? In other words, uh, you know, you ask me, are you calling on this home for yourself? Right off the bat. And if the answer is no, no, it's, um, you know, my, my brother is coming into town. Yeah, I don't know if you share my experience, but have you ever made any money from those <laughs> when they're calling for a brother, a cousin, an uncle, a friend? Uh, I, I haven't. Uh, so I just decided that that's the first question I'm going to ask somebody. I, I made that mistake earlier in my career of spending an enormous amount of time with um, what I'd later find to be non-prospects 
And I had nobody else to, to be upset with except for myself because I didn't ask the right questions from the get-go. So the first two questions are, are you calling for yourself? And do you have a real estate agent to help you find a home? Because if the answer is yes to one or both of those, it's goodbye. I, I, don't, you know, I'm gonna, I don't wanna be rude, but I'm gonna give them the information that they requested, but I'm certainly not going to be spending the time to ask any further qualifying questions because they've eliminated themselves, and I'm not going to waste my time or energy communicating an offer because this is not this is a prospect that's deemed to be not a good fit with me okay that we're not going any further with this prospect and if you if you understand that your most valuable asset is your time there there are no shortage of leads at the Craig Proctor office or at the Todd Walters office okay what what our people need to be really really good at is getting to the best ones and calling as many of those best leads within the the time that they have uh, you, you know, nobody walks away from my office or your office, Todd, at the end of the day saying, we're done. We got all done. You're never all done. Uh, if anything, you just fall further and further behind. So yeah, now the next thing I want to talk about is prioritizing the leads. What I recommend that inside salespeople listening to this call do is during your off time, and your off time obviously is during the day. Uh, the bottleneck um, is in the evening because that's when you're going to reach most prospects or weekends and e uh, evenings and weekends. What you need to do is you need to look through all the leads that have been plunked onto your day timer, or perhaps they're leads that were on your day timer uh, yesterday or the day before, and you need to prioritize them. We use um, uh, Office Agent or Agent 2000, so uh, the screen is split. There's a left side and there's a right side, and what I'd recommend you do is you take the best leads and you drag them over to the left side. But that's what I do. Every day I look at my leads, I say, okay, you know what? I've got 100 leads to call today. I know realistically I can call 40, so if I'm going to pick 40 out of the 100, what are the best 40? I take those 40 leads, I drag them over to the left side, and those are the ones that I call. Uh, I also make sure that I, I color code, because on Agent 2000, you can color code the leads. I'm sure it's the same on Top Producer. You can make them red, blue, or black. I color code the leads black if I have a day number. Okay, because if I can squeeze in a few calls during the day, uh, I want to do that because I know that the bottleneck is in the evening between seven and nine. I can't reach them all. I can be more productive if I have day numbers. Now, that being said, I would recommend that everyone try to get day numbers. Okay, here's a little innovation. And I could kick myself in the butt for not thinking of it earlier, but here's the innovation. Uh, well, this innovation is actually on top of an innovation. Uh, let me speak about the first innovation. The first innovation is question six in the universal follow-up script because there used to be no question six. When I asked a prospect uh, when they were thinking of making a move, when I, t when I asked them about timing, um, or sorry, when, when I asked them if they're ready uh, to, to list now, ready to buy or sell, uh, I kind of read between the lines and I would guess at when I should call them back. Uh, then I decided one day that I need to ask them. I asked them if, if it's okay if I, I asked them, would it be okay if I follow up with you at a later time? That's what I used to ask, and they would say yes, and I would guess. My innovation was, well, when do you think would be a good time for me to give you a call back? I mean, how simple is that? Okay, does everybody get that? Back in the old days, I used to ask if it was if the if the prospect sounded like they represented future business, I would ask them if it was okay if I followed up with them at a later time, and they'd they'd always say okay, or usually say okay, and then based on our conversation, I would take a stab in the dark at when I should call them back. And of course, quite often, I guess too late. Okay, then I decided, okay, whatever they tell me, I'm just gonna cut that in half. And then I came up with something even better than that. I came up with an add-on. When I asked the prospect if it's okay if I follow, them up, uh, follow up with them at a later time, and they say yes, I respond with this. Well, when do you think would be a good time for me to give you a call back? And quite often, the time period that the prospect would, would tell me would be earlier than normally I would have booked myself. So I was really happy that I asked that question. And today, I even cut that time in half. So if they tell me call in three months, I'll call in a month and a half. Okay, so here's a question seven for your universal follow-up script. I ask them if it's okay. If I follow up with them at a later time, they say yes. Then I follow up with, when do you think would be a good time for me to do that, to call you back? Then I ask this, do you have a work or a day number? Do you have a work number, day number, cell number 
uh, that I could follow up with. And about a third of them will give me that number. So now I have a whole bunch of day numbers, which means I can reach these people during the day. If I can reach a third of my people during the day, that really means I can make, a, I can make 30 percent more calls and make 30 percent more money. Okay, so just follow up with, when you ask them if it's okay, if you follow up with them at a later time, they all say yes. When do you think would be a good time for me to, to do that or to, to follow up with you? And by the way, do you have a day number, a worker cell number uh, that I can call you at? And what you'll find is a third of them will give it to you. And the, in, in reality, Todd, the best number to have today is the cell number. It's not the house number. Nobody answers the home phone. You know, people are screening the calls with, with voicemail at home. Uh, I would much prefer to have a work number because at least I know where to find them between nine and five. I, I know I can find them at work. They may not be at home, but they'll be at work or a cell number because they carry that on them personally. So those are a couple little of little innovations to the universal follow-up script. Uh, James, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that. Um, well, there's one, there's one, um, I guess it's it's like handling an objection that you talk about that our members um, have found maybe some different success than you have. And that is when you're asking them if they're using another agent, you then like to say, have you signed anything? And what a lot of our members find in asking that question is if they haven't signed something, it's almost like you're tipping them off that when you do book an appointment, it's going to be because you want them to sign something. So instead what we do is you can test asking them, are you 100% committed to using that agent? And they'll tell you whether they've signed something at that point. If they say, no, I'm not 100% not committed to using them, then great. You know you can go ahead and continue on with the script. So it's just that little, that little difference between talking about signing a contract, which obviously could be threatening to your prospect. And so it, it, it's a small tweak, but it's definitely made a difference. So you're saying that that shouldn't be your offer, come into our office to sign a contract? No, no, no. What I'm suggesting is that I'm when kidding, you're asking... kidding. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. No, when you're asking the question, are you working with an agent? Yes, we are. Are you 100% committed to that agent? Yes, we've signed a contract with them. Okay, well, the information is here. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Or the flip side is, are you 100% committed to using them? Well, no. I mean, we, he's a nice guy. We met him at an open house, but no, we're not committed to using him. Great, boom, you can continue on with the script. But once you introduce, have you signed a contract with that agent? Now we're talking about signing contracts. Now we know that later on in the script, we are going to ask them to come into our office. Yeah, now sometimes I'll have a, a, a buyer say to me, well, when we get together, do I have to sign anything? And the answer right. is always no, you don't have to sign anything. No, you don't have to sign anything. If you don't, we'll choose not to work with you any further, but you right. don't have to sign what you, anything when you meet. The, the, the best way to address that is to say, no, you don't have to sign anything, and you're never, ever obligated to buy a home at any time. Right, because you can't do the presentation over the phone. Uh, now, let's talk about that mistake, doing the presentation over the phone. Uh, I came into the office uh, a couple months ago because the electricity came, uh, the electricity went out of my house. So I, I had to drive into the office to make my calls. And um, I, I sat next to one of my inside salespeople. And I, what I heard was shocking because what they basically did is they did the buyer appointment on the phone. Okay, it was somebody that called in uh, for the distress sale list. I think it was no, they wanted to, a list of homes they could buy with no money down. And uh, my inside sales agent said, uh, well, you know, what are you looking for in a house? And, you know, I hear silence for like 60 seconds because now this buyer prospect is telling my inside sales agent exactly what they're looking for. Okay, here's the problem. Uh, how do you ever get this prospect into the office now? Because the hook to get the buyer uh, into the office is when can we get together so we can take down exactly what you're looking for? Well, now my inside sales agent has exactly what they're looking for because they just spent a couple of minutes on the phone listening to the prospect explain, describe in detail exactly what they're looking for. So you want to make sure that you're not doing the buyer appointment on the phone. Okay, you don't want to know what they're looking for. That's what the buyer appointment's all about. Okay, so that's not the, the, the design of the script to find out what buyers are looking for. We don't want to find out what buyers are looking for. We want to find out whether this is a buyer that we want to meet with. 
We want to find out whether this is a motivated buyer that wants to buy a house today. That's the objective of the script, not to find out what buyers are looking for. That's the job of the, the appointment, is to find out what buyers are looking for and present all of our benefits and get them signed to a contract. So our, our um, inside sales agents need to really understand what they're trying to accomplish. Uh, you're not trying to sell anybody a house. You're not trying to find out what they're looking for. You're trying to simply do two things, determine motivation and timing. Are they going to do it and when? Okay, all that other stuff falls on the shoulders of the outside sales agents, okay, who meet with the buyers and sellers. They're the ones that need to take the ball from there. So our job is very specific. It's to make a lot of phone calls, okay, and qualify a lot of buyers and sellers as far as who we want to meet with and who we don't want to meet with, and then make an awesome offer to the people that we want to meet with to make sure they, they want to meet with us. Okay, next thing I want to talk about, Todd, are no-shows. That's a problem that a lot of uh, inside sales agents have is, um, you know, they book appointments and then nobody shows up for the appointments. Yep. And I always say this to my inside sales agents. I say, well, look, at, do you think if the buyer was coming into the office to get a box full of gold bricks, they'd forget about it? Okay, if that was the offer, come in, come into the office. Uh, if you come into Todd Walter's office, we're going to give you a couple of gold bricks. They're worth uh, several thousands of dollars. If that was the offer, every buyer would show up at Todd's office. Okay, so what that means really means two things. Number one, prospects didn't even understand your offer to begin with, or it was so unimportant to them they actually forgot about it. Now, I would recommend strongly that you make your appointments, you set your appointments as close to now as possible because people are busy and they do, they do forget. But I think it all falls back on making the, the, the offer sound so beneficial that people don't expect, uh, don't, don't forget it. And they write it down and, and they're, they're at the appointment. Um, many cases, James, you and I have talked about the fact that we feel that buyers just say, yeah, yeah, um, sure, I'll... Um, I'll agree to whatever you're offering me just to get the, the realtor off the phone. Right. It's, it's like the prospect needs to understand what is being offered, why it's a benefit to them, and then, most importantly, the risk needs to be removed. You have to make it abundantly clear that this is an absolutely free service. They're never, ever obligated to buy a home. Because if the benefit is there, but that threat of – of obligation or the threat of cost is still present, then it's likely that they may consider at some point not showing up. You know, so when there are no shows, when, when a member says to us, oh, half of the prospects I, I book appointments with don't wind up showing up, that's an indication that what you're saying in your offer isn't good enough to share both the benefit and remove the risk. I'd put, um... I'd put cancellations in that same category. You know, it seems like we get some lame excuses for uh, or put offs. People call up and say, "Man, I, I'm not going to be able to make it at uh, at, at six o'clock today. I'll, I'll call you when I when I'm available." You know, same thing. You know, so a cancellation. You know, sometimes we want to we want to be upbeat about, but let's face it, if it was something very important, they'd be there. Okay, what I think we should do now is I think we should talk to some of our inside salespeople. You've got some of your guys on the line today, Todd? I do. I got okay. them on the I, I've got one of mine on uh, Victor, uh, who is, is uh, not new with us anymore. He is an up-and-comer. This guy totally gets it. Uh, he's got lots of deep personality. Uh, Victor, if you're with us, uh, I think he is. Uh, press 1, and let's bring you onto the call. Victor's line is open. Hey, Vic, how you doing? Vic, are you there? Victor, your line is open. He had his phone on mute. Victor, are you with us? Confirm Victor's last name for me, Craig. Visconti. That is the person who I unmuted. So. Hey, okay, Victor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, Vic. How are you doing? Hi. Great, thank you. How are you? Great. Uh, hey, Vic, uh, we have uh, everyone's inside sales agents on, on the line here today. And um, you, you definitely get this, okay? And I noticed you've been really been coming on. Um, you, you're booking more appointments every day. You've got more confidence. And you're, uh, you know, you're following the script, okay? And you're not afraid of the phone, which is, which is key. Um, you're, you've got a, you're a high DI personality, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, yes. Right. So yeah. what, that, what that means is 
what that means is Victor hates to waste his time, just like a lot of D's and I's. Um, what, what has been your learning curve with this? Just share with the other inside sales agents. Uh, I mean, you were through the coaching program. You've had all the yeah, training. Yeah. But it, it's just been in the last month or two that you've really grabbed onto this and started to see some big results. Ask all the questions. And before you ask for the appointment, um, you have to, uh, you have to uh, um, compel, uh, you have to ask uh, the person uh, for, um, if, they, if, if they're interested in either the emails or if they're interested in the market evaluation before you ask for the appointment. When I first started doing this, I would ask for the appointment too soon. I wouldn't go through all the questions. Okay, so you were trying to close for the appointment without really communicating the best. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't saying the right words. I wasn't saying priority notification. I wasn't saying proprietary information. I wasn't using those words. And as soon as I started asking them if they would like me to email them daily updates of homes that match their home buying criteria, right away they would say, "Yeah, sure, I'd be interested." And sometimes I'd even ask them to say yes twice before I asked for the appointment. Now, are you having any challenges with no-shows, or is that pretty much evaporated for you? Actually, um, I still have a little bit of a challenge with no-shows, Craig. And is it generally appointments that you set up like a week from now, or it doesn't seem to matter? Um, no, it doesn't seem to matter. I find that the, 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 the further away the appointment is set, the, the, the more, uh, the higher the percentage of the person not showing up or canceling. Or, and are or, these or, mostly buyer appointments or listing appointments? They're mostly buyer appointments. I find, yeah, I find most of them are buyer points. Okay, with, when with, you follow up with these buyers, what do they say as to why they didn't keep the appointment? Sometimes, sometimes it takes me a week or two or three. Sometimes uh, they say, oh, they forgot. Sometimes, uh, you know, they, the truth really comes out. Oh, really, we're really not that serious. Um, uh, we have to get our finances in order. Oh, I forgot to tell you that I had a repossession last month or something like that. Okay, um, uh, Victor, I'm going to keep you on the line. We'll keep your line open as well, so uh, be careful of any background noise. Uh, let's, uh, Todd, let's get one of your inside sales agents on here as well. All right, Greg. Hey, Joe, you there? Yes, sir. All right, so, Joe, now how long have you been doing this? Uh, almost two months. All right, so you've been doing two months, and, and then last week you had a pretty good week. You had about, uh, what was it, about 21, 22? Yes. Face-to-face -face appointments set, and they were pretty good appointments, right? But it's Joe, right? Joe Jennings. Okay, Joe, how many of those, how many of the 22 appointments were buyers versus CMAs? I would say that uh, probably it's, three it's, quarters it's, were buyers. Okay, three quarters were buyers, so I don't like, uh, I don't know, uh, 15? 13 to 15. 13 to, okay, 13 to, okay. Um, so you're finding it easier to book the buyer appointments than the listing appointments? I've just been working more on the buyer appointments. I, I can do well with the listings also. Okay, what do you think your biggest problem is uh, with this? What's the biggest challenge? My biggest problem when I first started was uh, I think this whole thing is uh, you've got to get through to them that this is a tremendous benefit, and that's one of the questions that you, you have to ask. Do you think this will benefit you? And uh, if you get them to say that and you know that, that they're in need of this service, it's very easy to book the appointment strong and make it so that they do show. Now, are, are you call, Joe, are you calling these appointments prior, uh, the day prior to the appointment to remind them to show yes, up? Yes, I do confirm strongly, uh, and I think that helps a lot. Are, are, we, are you just calling, Joe, or are you sending them, a, you send them a little note when you hang up the phone with them? I always do an email, and then I, uh, uh, Ted has asked that we, in the last week to 10 days, to confirm the appointment at least one or two days before. And now, if you don't have their email address, obviously you're asking for it at that point, right? Yes, I always get their email address uh, if it's not on the uh, agent office, and I email them as soon as I email the agent just uh, to thank them and so that they have a contact number here at our office. Hey, Victor, I don't think we're doing that, are we? Uh, no. If it, well, we, what I do anyway, if the appointment's booked uh, over a week away, I do make a courtesy phone call. To, to confirm, to remind, people forget their lives are busy, and and my thinking, whether it's right or wrong, is if they if they, if I can't get them to book tight one or two days away, and they push me off a week or a week and a half away, I kind of read between the lines and I say, well, how really serious are these people? So I call to try to confirm so that if I have to, you know, if we get the opportunity to to take that time slot and give it to someone else for outside sales, and we go ahead and do that, right? But if it's a long way away, I I try to. 
I try to confirm sometimes. I don't always get around to doing it, but I try, Craig. You know, uh, in a lot of cases, we have their email address. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea when you're on the phone, after you have the appointment verbally agreed to, say, uh, you know, I'm going to shoot you an email uh, today, right now, just to remind you of the appointment. Actually, uh, I do that. Actually, I send them, I send them, and I also give them the name of the uh, person that they're, they're going to meet, and I do that sometimes uh, if I do have their email address, correct? And that works well sometimes because sometimes uh, if they're going to pop you back an email to reschedule or something, sometimes they do that. And that's okay if they reschedule, I guess. Same yeah, here. I've been very successful with dropping the email. and I think it really helps. Okay, now this is a question for both uh, Joe and Victor. Um, what do you do in a situation where you ask the prospect all the right questions and they seem like a good prospect, a good buyer or seller, somebody that you deem that you know we want to meet with, uh, when you make them the offer, if they don't jump on the offer, what do you do? I go to the next close that we have, sweeten the deal. Okay, let, let's hear your sweeten the deal. The nice thing about our home hunting service is that it gives you priority access to all the hot new listings, like distressed sales and bank foreclosures. Do you think that might be a benefit for you? Okay. Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on one second, Craig. So, and this is a big deal. We talk about this early on when we bring in new inside salespeople. We don't hear it enough. Really, what this comes down to then? is priority access to specialized information or proprietary, proprietary information. If we can make that connection, uh, and Joe, you and I talked about this, as a deal sweetener, it pretty much does them in. Is that right? It does. If you ask that question after you ask them, the, the, if, if you make the statement like that, they'll, they think, and sometimes the whole thing, it drops right there. They say, oh, yes, this is something that we think would be very important. No one's ever... Yeah, what I found is I found that the, the priority access, you know, words, just that word alone, really sinks in better uh, as a um, as a deal sweetener than it does like an upfront offer. Does that make sense, Craig? Have you ever oh, okay, uh, so I want to get this from the beginning. So, Joe, when when you're uh, communicating the buyer offer, uh, okay, you said um, I understand what you do to sweeten the pot. Let's hear your initial how you initially describe it, and then if there's any resistance. Uh, what you come back with. So I want to hear the whole thing from the start. Okay, the reason that I asked that our office, we have this uh, unique home hunting service where if I know the type of home that you're looking for, the area and the price range, and your specific buying criteria, we can email pictures and descriptions available uh, that will match what you're looking for. And now, now well, if, I say, well, if I say, well, you know, I, I just kind of look on my own, I, I go onto the internet and look, then what do you come back with? I usually go right into that second offer, and then if I have any problems with them at all, I go into the third and then close. Okay, let's hear the third offer. The third offer is, um, you know, what's uh, what you like best about our home hunting service is that you're in total control. You get to pick out all the homes that you like and drive by them on your own. Again, it's free and no hassle service, and you're not under any glob obligation to purchase anything. Does it sound like a better way to find a home than what you're doing now? Okay, so really what we're talking about here is the difference between features and benefits. Yep. So a, a feature a, a feature is uh, we're going to email you listings, including bank foreclosures, company-owned properties, and distressed sales. That's the feature. The real benefit, though, is fast. Okay, you're going to get this information fast. Uh, we call that priority notification. If everyone can write that down, mm -hmm. there's, there's, two, there's really two benefits that we're communicating to buyers. Okay, per priority notification, that means fast. You're gonna get this stuff faster than any other way. And proprietary information. Okay, you can't get this information anywhere else but here. So we're gonna get you information fast, and fast means beat out other buyers to hot new listings. Fast means save money. Okay, and proprietary information means save money. So what this is all about is convenience and saving money. And this is what they need to hear is that this, this is what needs to really come through is, is you need us, you can't get this by driving through neighborhoods and looking through the newspaper or going to these MLS internet sites. You can't get this from other agents. Okay, this is what we're saying without really saying it. Um, you're gonna get information every day on all the new listings that match your home buying criteria, including bank foreclosures, company-owned properties, and distress sales. Okay, now, a very common objection, once, once you make the offer and they opt in, they say, yes, I would like that. When you come back with the commitment, which is when can we get together, sometimes they'll, they'll say to you, well, I don't know, I'm really busy right now. 
In other words, I don't know if I'm ready for this yet. I don't know if I'm ready to meet with you right yet because I'm really, really busy at work or whatever. Now, I turn that around and I say, well, you know, that's what's perfect about our, our buyer system is it's perfect for busy people like you because you don't have to do anything. It's perfect for busy people like you. All you have to do at your own convenience is check your inbox and you'll know with confidence at any of the homes that were listed that match your criteria will be automatically emailed to you. And then when it's convenient to you, you can print them those off, the ones that interest you and drive by them. And all we ask in return is that you uh, give us a call when you see a property that you'd like to look at. So um, you can't use the I'm too busy as an excuse because we've turned that excuse around and we're, we're telling you that's what's perfect about this system is it's designed specifically for busy people like you. Now, when you try to handle the objections, what you're going to find is the people that are sincere are going to work with you. And for example, if, if um, the prospect says, well, you know, I can't book that time right now because I need to talk to my spouse or I got to check my work schedule. We've taught you guys to uh, try to set a tentative appointment because a sincere, realistic person would go for that, right? Uh, okay, maybe, maybe, this pro maybe this prospect does have to talk to their spouse or check their work schedule. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt and let's, let's suggest that we set up a tentative time for say Thursday at seven o'clock. And if you talk to your spouse or you check your work schedule, you, you determine that's not a good time, uh, just give us a call and we can change the time. That, that's, a, that's a good suggestion, right? And a sincere prospect should take you up on that. If they're insincere, you'll probably find that they'll invent another excuse or reason why they can't meet with you. And that's when they'll come back with, well, you know, I don't know if I'm quite ready for that yet. Have you guys ever heard that before? Uh, Joe and Vic, I don't know if I'm ready oh, for that sure. quite yet. Oh, sure. We, we, I run into that. Not often, but, you know, every now and again, we get that excuse. Every once in a while. Yep. Okay, so what would you say to that when, when they come back with, I don't know if, you're, if I'm ready for that quite yet? Vic? I don't know if I'm ready for to start looking at houses right now. Well, for the uh, here's, here's what I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I understand the question correctly. Okay. If um, if you suggest that we set up a tentative time yep. and they fight you on that and they say, ah, you know, uh, basically what they're saying is I don't want to meet with you quite mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. How, what do you do at that point? What is it that I would ask them something like, uh, what is it that you're not, what is it that you're not sure of? Um, we, uh, I, 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 I reconfirm if they're a buyer, I reconfirm uh, uh, market uh, market status that now is a good time. I, I talk a little bit about, uh, about the uh, finan uh, financial programs that are in place for buyers that have never been in place before and it may be advantageous for him or her to look at purchasing a home now rather than later and uh, the, the home purchase is a process and it may take time for, to find a new home. Finding good properties like mining for gold, you got to move tons of dirt before you find the gold. And sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes that works. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Maybe we should get together and start looking at property now. And can we set something up tentatively? Uh, let's go back to James McDonald. James, how, how hard do you think we should be fighting for prospects that are, uh, I describe as a moving target. Every time you handle an objection, they, they invent a new one. You know what? It really comes down to what we talked about in the very beginning of this call, which is a lot of times why that happens is because you're trying to convert a prospect that maybe it's just not appropriate that you're converting them. Maybe you haven't done a really good job of determining the fact that they really don't represent a, a, a buyer shopping for a home right now. So you've made them a perfectly good offer. And would you like me to email you homes every day that match exactly what you're looking for, absolutely free? And they say, no, I don't think I'm ready for that. Well, it's probably because you've made an offer to a non-prospect, which means really you need to go back. And that's why, you know, in speaking with the two inside sales guys we've got on the call today, um, they'll probably find that this happens less and less often, the better they get at making these calls. You know, um, one other thing I'll say as well is that a lot of it has to do with the fear of cost and obligation. So you can do a bang up job of explaining uh, priority access and this saves you know, busy people time uh, because, you know, you, you can get up in the morning, turn on your email, boom, the properties are right there. You know about them before any other buyers do. Obviously, that means, you know, you, you have a better shot of finding the perfect home. But the fact of the matter is, is that if the threat of cost or obligation is still present, then you're going to have that moving target. 
no, I don't think we're ready for that yet. So it's really twofold. It's, it's uh, making the offer sound amazing and then making it perfectly clear that this is a free service and they're never obligated to buy a home. That's right. That's right. And in the first place, you know, overall, making sure this is somebody you should be making the offer to. You know, I mean, that's the whole purpose of those qualifying questions. You've got and seven. I guess, I, I guess uh, cutting your losses. And once you determine that maybe this isn't a grade A prospect, uh, getting off the phone, getting back on the phone with somebody that is. Well, exactly. You know, a lot of times, you know, for our members in the coaching program, certainly, you know, they, they feel they feel obligated to stay on the phone and almost battle with a prospect because they may not have a full funnel of other prospects behind them who are good, qualified, motivated prospects. So it's justifiable that they're going to spend all their time with that one prospect. But for you guys, that certainly isn't the case. You are, you are jeopardizing other prospects because you're spending way too much time with, with one prospect who, you know, maybe you shouldn't be. Yeah. The best lead may be the lead you don't get to. Well, that's right. Got plenty of those, buddy. Well, uh, you know, so here's one other thing as well, Craig. Um, you know, if, if you find that you're in a fight with a prospect on the phone, you've already lost, you know, no fights ever been won over the phone. So when you talk about a moving target, if it comes to the point where maybe you've made the offer two or three times and you've really presented it well, if, if you're in a position where it feels like you're, you're battling your prospect, you've already lost. You know, you're much better off to go on to the next one. Well, the way I like to see it is, is the prospect has already eliminated themselves. You know, we're not a good right. fit with, with everyone. We don't need to be. Um, in my office, you know, we generate 1,000 leads a month to sell 50 homes. So we certainly have the luxury of choice. Uh, what concerns me is not the 50 we get. It's the 50 that we don't get uh, that um, do business with somebody else because we didn't get to them or we didn't do a good enough job following up with them. Uh, so um, I would say if, if you listen to me making the calls, uh, one thing for sure that you would notice is I end up calling more people in a two-hour period than anybody else does because I'm, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm dialing a number every two minutes. Every two minutes on average, I'm hanging up, I'm dialing a number, I'm not wasting a whole bunch of time reading the notes, I'm not um, you know, trying to um, uh, convince people to do business with us, I'm not spending five minutes on the phone with anybody, it's two minutes even when I book an appointment. Uh, so it's a numbers game, okay? Uh, we, I, I think you're right, James, we have to, we can't have the mindset that we're trying to convert everybody. Uh, what we're trying to do, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find the easiest ones to convert. And if I can make uh, 40 calls in a two hour period, okay, which is pretty average for me between seven and nine, and nobody believes that by the way, but mm -hmm. between seven and nine, I'll go through about 40 files and uh, you know, I'm on and off the phone. And even if I book an appointment, I'm on and off the phone in a couple minutes. Uh, where you get into trouble is when you get into these five, 10 minute um, uh, conversations and, and it's a real problem because when you're on the phone with a prospect for five or 10 minutes, sometimes it, you're sacrificing the appointment because in five or 10 minutes, you're either going to take down a lot of information or give them a lot of information, which uh, ironically uh, jeopardizes uh, your appointment. Does everyone see that? If you take down a lot of their information or you give them a lot of information, now they don't need the appointment. So, you know, you, you just need to follow the script. I would I would recommend you just start you just read the script if you have to read the script and whenever um, you know tie a, a, a string on your finger whenever you uh, catch yourself uh, going off of the script yank on that string because mm -hmm. it's it's that like what I do is not complicated uh, it's the same thing over and over and over and over again and think of how good you become at that and and Victor I know you've become so much better over the last couple months and you'll see that you see that in the results you get it you see it in the paychecks you're getting. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll tell you one thing about Victor is he hates to waste his time, which is great. I'd, I would rather take somebody that's a high D and high I personality and, uh, and, and, and teach them this script than somebody that's afraid of the phone or doesn't like to make calls. And Victor, that's certainly not you. You're like me. We get on the phone and we do it and we want to get results and nothing gets in the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to uh, I'd like to get through the calls and get through the questions and find out if I'm working with someone where, you know, we can do something together and or, or not. 
And I'm giving uh, Victor uh, greater responsibility. Now that I'm um, not making the calls as much, I'm giving more of my leads to uh, to Carol and, and, and Victor and my inside salespeople to, uh, to carry the ball. And this is a bit of a test. Like uh, uh, Carol was away uh, this week, right? And you were, mm-hmm. you were getting her leads, my leads. You were getting everything, right? I got quite a few. Yeah, I booked an appointment while we were on the call. Actually, I put you on mute. I answered the phone. I booked an appointment. That's where it was when we were trying to get you on the yeah, that's call. Right. Actually, actually, that's right. Actually, that's right. Yeah, I booked an appointment. Yeah. So, uh, and, and here's here's how I want it set up with our inside sales agents. I want I want Victor to make so much money doing this that he can't wait to uh, to get to work, and he wants to, you know, uh, at nine o'clock we have to tell him to go home, and he doesn't want to. You know, that's, <laughs> that's how excited I want him to be, and uh, you know, that's that's what would turn me on. Because if you're making lots of money, you're making me lots of money. That's right. Yep. So, uh, and, and you know what, you, because you came to us and you knew the system and uh, because you've got the right personality type, as soon as I saw your personality score, I thought, well, this guy's going to be, um, you know, this guy's going to be an all-star on the phone uh, because, you know, you get it. You get it. You don't like to waste your time. Uh, and, and now it's just a matter of getting you to, to follow that script and, um, you know, becoming really awesome at communicating those offers. Mm-hmm. And uh, the one area you probably need to improve on is you're really good at talking is listening more when you're asking those questions. Just, just you know, because because you're a D and you want to get things done. Um, sometimes you're not you're not given enough time to really listen to how they're responding and then deciding what the next thing you're going to say is. I have to agree with you, Craig. I do have to listen a little bit more and be a little bit more patient and. Uh... You know, you like that Kenny Rogers song goes, uh, you'll have to, you know, no one to hold them, no one to fold them, you know? Yeah, and no yep. one to walk away. That's right. Exactly right. Yeah. You guys listen to country music up there in Canada? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> country and Western. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you want to do next, Todd? Uh, I'd like to uh, get one of my other inside sales guys here on the on the call. I'd Craig and Todd, I... Craig and Todd, I have to apologize. I have to uh, get on to another call here. So thanks so much for having me. Uh, yeah, uh, James has to go. I think Oprah is on now, so he has to uh, go watch that. <laughs> I'll see you at hockey, smartass. All right, see you later, James. You don't want to talk to you like that. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know I, what I'm going to do with him. He's out of control. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Hi, Mike, are you still on the call? Yes, I am. All right. Now, Mike, um, you started about the same time Joe did, but um, I kind of had you working on some other projects for me. How long have you been calling these uh, these these leads that we're getting out know, the buyer leads, sign calls, ad calls back? How long have you been working on that? Uh, this new year, oh seven. Okay, so pretty much started right around January, first of January. Right after the first there. Okay, so um, you know, how do you feel like things are going for you right now? Uh, I feel good. Yeah, uh, I'm ex- I'm excited. I have plenty of room to improve. Well, I mean, I don't think you're doing anything really wrong or bad. When we get on the phone and we role play this out, everything sounds pretty good on the phone to me. Um, to me, and, and I just want to make an observation here because I'm looking at, uh, you know, I'm just looking at the overall schedulers and you know, the number of leads we have, number of calls that are being made. And the thing that I, I see more consistently that I think is an issue that I would have or I had, you know, kind of early on when I was making the calls was I wasn't getting to enough people on the phone. Okay, so. Primarily, uh, wasn't because I was spending too much time on the phone with them. It's just that uh, I was doing other things. So, if uh, just from looking at the call scheduler, it just seems to me that uh, maybe maybe the number of calls that are being made each day. It, I don't know. You can tell me if you think it's different, but it looks to me like maybe you're just not talking to enough people. Oh, no doubt about it. Uh, to, to definitely need them. to improve. There. I mean, because um, you know doing. Doing 15, you know, 16 um, appointments a week, that's that's fine. But, I mean, capacity-wise, I mean, you, you should be knocking down 25 or 30 based on the number of leads that are there. But sometimes, you know, I'm maybe I'm just wrong. It looks like the leads are there, but uh, is there a problem that we're running into, you think, with actually reaching people in the evening times? Uh, are you reaching everybody that you call? Well, I, yeah, I, Mike, is it an issue that uh, you're not reaching enough people, or when you talk to them, you think you're talking to them for too long? Oh, I need to reach more people. I need to contact them at a time where, you know, I can at least have one or two minutes of undivided attention. Uh, sometimes in the late hours, like on buyer webs, you know, we'll have our in that is, you know, we're letting you know we received your request for free information, and we're sending that to you. And that might happen like when they're bathing the kids or right in the middle of do dinner. You ask them and for I, a, do you ask them for a day number, a cell number? Uh, 
No, usually I would just call back. But I, I, I would definitely, I would start doing that. I, I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier, but I got sick and tired, I, I guess, uh, a couple months ago of not, of, you know, voicemail, voicemail, voicemail. So, uh, you know, I, I, I just have a little sticky note on my computer that says, when you get them, ask for other numbers, because they're so hard to reach these people today, in many cases, that when I do reach them, I want to make sure that I ask them for alternate numbers so it is easier to get them the next time. Yeah, great right. point. Great so point. why would why would a, a person that's not expecting your call, Craig, that you're just making a courtesy call to to let them know you received the request for the information report, why would they give you their cell number? Because I follow up using the script. Uh, if I determine they're not ready to act now, I don't even make the offer. And I ask them if it would be okay uh, to follow up with them at a later time, which they all say yes. And uh, then I come back with, when do you think it would be a good time for me to give you a call back? And they say, you know, six weeks, six years, whatever. I cut that in half. And then I say, oh, one more thing, um, do you have a day number or a work number I can reach you at? And a third of them say, yeah. Some of them say, you know what, I can't take calls at work or I don't have a cell number or I don't want to give you my cell number. That's fine. I'm no worse off. I, nope. still, have, I still have the lousy home number. Yeah. The home number is the worst number to have. That's what I found. The home number is the worst number to have. I would rather... Anytime now, I'd rather have their cell number. The cell number they have on them all the time. Cell number is best. Work number is second best. Home number is the worst number to have because, Mike, you're right. When you call them at home, they're busy. They're eating dinner. They're bathing the kids. They're, you know, they're heading out the door. Um, they, they'll, they'll give you more of their time at work than anything else because someone else is paying them to talk to you. Right, and a lot of these are buyer web leads. They're not expecting our call, and don't really care to talk to us and we don't have even 30 seconds to let them know that we have something good that we can share with them and in that 30 seconds you know I've kind of blown my in you know which we're just letting you know we received your request for the free information so I need a new end to, in the end to call back well I think, so, you, I think you want to say this you want to you want to let them know that um, you're calling them back because you received their request you're sending out the information you're going to ask them if they're you know about timing are they thinking of buying a house now if they own or whether they rent uh, if the timing is if they say well you know I'm not ready to do anything for a couple months uh, then uh, you're going to ask them if it's okay if you follow up with them at a later time so you can send them some more information they're all going to say yes and then you're going to say well when would it be a good time for me to give you a shout back They'll say, you know, a month from now. Uh, so in my mind, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut that in half and schedule for two weeks. And one more thing, Mike, do you have a day number or cell number I can reach at? That's simple. I don't you're saying, say, yeah. What you're saying, Mike, is they're cutting you off, you know. Right. I've made the call, and it's at an inappropriate time. You know, it might have all gone great if they had just sat down and, you know, had, well, well, had a couple role, Let's just role play it out. You be the, um, you be the, the lead, and I'm calling, Okay. Okay. Right, so I'm, I'm calling you, and um, you know you request a list of homes or something. So, so ring, ring. Hello, is Mike there? Hey, this is Mike. Yeah, hey Mike, this is Todd. Todd Walters and Associates, the Realty Team. And the reason I'm calling is I received your request for the list of homes that you wanted. Pop that in the mail to you, so you should have that in the next couple of days or so. And is that okay with you? Yeah, that sounds great. Hey, I got I got two kids in the tub right now, and uh, I got to go. Thanks for sending that to me. Would it be okay if I follow back up with you to discuss the information a little bit more? Uh, sure, that'd be fine. Okay, what's a good number for me to call you back at? Do you have a cell number? Maybe I could reach you at. Uh, I, I don't night? have. I don't have time. I got to go right now. Okay, so I think the thing is, is that if we don't ask, we're not going to get right. For sure. So, uh, and the fact is, we probably haven't been asking for that number. You know, because it is easy once they start going down the road of, of pushing away uh, or pushing us off that uh, we tend to okay, you know, kind of thing and hang up the phone, but. Well, you know what I didn't hear there. I didn't. I didn't hear a big enough benefit for me to want you to follow up. Yeah, and that's why. And that's why I'm uh, trying to figure out. You know, after we make, after we tell them who we are and why we're calling, um, we're not we're not offering any benefits until we even find out we have a real buyer, right? Right, so and, what, and what we're not having a time frame. Yeah, but what if you said this? Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to email you some information on homes that match your criteria. When would be a good time for me to follow up with you? All right, I got you. So. So when they push back, when they push off, go ahead and, and tell them. We got to offer them something. Like your your offer was, uh, when can I call you back so we can further discuss the information? As a prospect, my mindset is, you know what? I already you said you already sent me what I wanted, so uh, goodbye. You know, uh, there there was no there's no um, benefit. Uh, you're you're not stringing me along with anything. So right, and they haven't even received that at the moment I'm calling them. All right, so bingo. That's a, that's what that's what we do then. So when they push back and they push you off. 
then uh, well, when's, a, when's a good time for me to follow back up with you? To I'd like I have some, you know, some uh, some listings that. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to send you information on homes that match your criteria, including any bank foreclosures, company-owned properties, or distress sales. It's a free service. You're never obligated to buy anything. Would that interest you? So why yeah, you find you, out now. Yeah, we don't have anything to lose, right? Right. And so the guy says, look, I can't talk right now. Great. Uh, when would be a good time for me to give you a, a call back? And he says, tomorrow night, uh, look, do you have a day number or uh, you have a work number or cell number I can reach at? A third of the time they say yes. All right. So that's, uh, and that's just logical. I, I'm, I'm really good at that. I'm really good at not letting them blow me off on the phone. At least, uh, at least I'm getting some of my questions in to determine whether this is someone I even want to follow up with. Even if, like, even if they're pushing away from me and they, you can tell they just, they're just dying to get off the phone. I'm good at squeezing a couple of those questions because I get those benefits in there. And, um, you know, then I'm determining, uh, you know, how, how badly do I want to reach this guy? That's perfect. Well, that'll help, right, Mike? Yes, it will. Right, cause uh, we Mike, are, you are you taping any of your calls, Mike? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. Uh, I know, Victor, you've taped a few years and you sent them over to James, right? Sure. Yes, have I you have. Any, any feedback from James? Not yet, no. Okay. Well, uh, we need to do that. We need to, uh, we need to find, a, a, first of all, a better way to tape these calls. Um, we're going to come up with some electronic way of doing this. Um, so there's an audio file that we can actually email back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the best way to do it. What we're doing right now is we're using tape recording, you know, tape recorders, right? So that's not the best way. So Todd, we're going to figure out a better way to get these calls uh, taped. Yeah, I tape uh, all my I tape all my calls now. I've got um, uh, QuickTime that allows me to uh, record all the calls. Problem is, is I can't. Uh, they're stored in that QuickTime program. I can't email. Okay, we got to figure out a way to electronically record them and email them, so it's so it's easy. And uh, uh, Vic, I got to I've I've got to get those tapes as well, so I can listen to them directly. Okay. Uh, uh, it's good for you guys also to listen to your own tapes. That's no question. Every time I role play with, um, like, uh, we just hired uh, a, a new lady uh, last week, Lori, and uh, we spent probably now two and a half hours on the phone just role playing and working on this. So we tape the call. I give her the CD after we get off the phone, and she listens to it back and forth in the car. Uh, what we worked on, and uh, it, it takes you, uh, it takes you forward uh, light years as opposed to uh, not doing it that way. No question. We probably should take some uh, some questions here, Craig, from uh, some of the folks on the call. And those okay, one one thing before we do that. Uh, hey, Vic, have you noticed yes. how you've got great confidence with people now on the phone? Uh, because you know uh, that they're going to respond with the same five or six things. Like there's only about five or six ways they respond. And, and now that you know what those are, it's pretty easy to handle those objections uh, because you've heard it all before. I think I'm getting better at it, Craig. I don't know if I've mastered it yet, but I, I do believe that I'm getting better at it. And I have turned, uh, I, I know that I, I have turned some people around on the, mostly on the CMA side, if they kind of give me a little bit of a pushback on there. You know, I know that they're looking at selling, but they're not letting us get in there. I'm getting a little bit better at that. Yeah, see, where I need to do some more work with you is when they push back, I need to show you how to get more bees with honey. Because um, you'll notice if they push me back, uh, I never get sort of flustered. I always come back with something that gets them to do what I want. Mm -hmm. And that's really the key with this is, is getting them to do what you want um, by asking the right questions and saying the right things. And uh, if you listen to me make my calls, you never really, um, you know, you never really hear me getting caught short on words, right? It's, it's never a situation where I don't know where to go next. I know exactly where to go next. Um, no matter what they say, I always, I, it's like a flow chart. If you can imagine a flow chart in front of you, I always know what the next step is. So no matter whether they say this, this, or this, or this, there's automatically, I, I know what the next thing I'm going to say, and I'm leading them always to the same conclusion. Uh, the roadmap to get there might be slightly different, but the destination is always the same. And, um, you know, it's just from years of doing it, you get this great confidence on the phone that I don't care who they are, or whether they're adversarial or not, um, I'm going to take them to the same place. And I'm going to win. Okay, the, the prospect who is the amateur is not going to win. I'm the professional, uh, and I know exactly what to say next, next, and next to get them there. Mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. what we need. We need everybody. Ta what Todd and I need, and and what what needs to happen is we need to get the inside sales um, up to that level where you guys are cranking out so many appointments that you're making so much money. Uh, and we're making so much money that everybody's excited about this. And definitely, I've seen that change in you. 
Like I, I would say, what is it? But in the last couple of months, where you're really starting to crank it up? Yeah, I, I've I've seen my appointments going up quite a bit. And just so I'd like to just say something. Um, I I believe that like my attitude is is like this. It's not that the pro- I could. It's not that the prospect wouldn't do what I'm asking them to do or compelling them to do. It's that I couldn't compel them to do it. I blame myself. I don't blame them. I blame myself. If there's a little bit of motivation there, sometimes I blame myself because I couldn't just say the right thing to get them to or to compel them to do or to come in and meet with us or get one of our guys to get out there. And 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 I'm finding that the, by practice listening to, to some of my tapes and just practicing trying different things, I'm finding I'm getting a little bit better and better at it. And uh, Vic, you know what we'll do? I did this with uh, Nancy uh, a week or so ago. We'll pick a night, maybe Thursday night or something. And, and what I'll do is I'll listen to you make the calls. I did sure. that with Nancy a week or so ago. So, um, you know, usually the way it works, Todd, is um, my inside sales agents will listen quietly um, as I make the calls. Uh, so with three-way calling, they'll just listen on the sidelines as I make the calls. So I've been reversing this now, and I'm just listening to them for a couple hours make the calls. And then uh, after each call, I just critique it and I say, okay, here's what I would have done differently. Or, you know, you did it. That was perfect. That was a home run. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that sometime in the next week or so, Vic. Sure. Your convenience. Great. Okay. Well, Vic, look, we'll let you, uh, we'll let you get back to work. Thank you. Great job. It's uh, it's uh, three twenty. Go make some money. Thank you very much guys. Good luck. All right. right. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye. 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 I one one thing you, you, we were talking about the sign calls earlier, Craig, and uh, I was just curious. I I forgot about it when you were asking, Uh, you know, the guy calls up the sign, you know, said, are you looking for yourself? And then, you know, you offer a little bit of the information, but you are finding out if they own a house or not right during that uh, sign call script. Yep. And, uh, but I'm finding out, I'm I'm try, my goal is to get all my questions answered. Right. So when they when you find out they own a home, just, they are calling on a sign though. Are you still changing the offer to? Uh, well, to Todd, would you, you do you prefer to buy your next home before you list your home, or would right. you prefer to, to? I just want to make sure you were getting that question. Right. In there right. Getting that question out because I don't want to. I used to guess uh, what offer to make. Most agents do. You know, if it's an ad call, they they guess. Okay, uh, so this is someone calling off of an ad or they're calling off of a sign, so therefore they're a buyer. Not necessarily. They may be a seller's prospect, and if you communicate the buyer offer to a seller's prospect, they're going to reject your offer because that's not where their head's at. They want to sell their house before they find one. Even though they called you off of an ad, it doesn't mean they want to buy a home before they sell their home. You need to know what offer to make. So how do you find out? You ask the question. And then once you know the answer, then you can communicate the right offer. And when you communicate the right offer, it works better. Amen, brother. Let's take some calls. I know these guys, um, some of these people out there need some, have some questions, need some work. I'm getting a couple of emails. Okay, Mike, uh, Todd said you can take the rest of the week off. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> okay, sure. let's go back to our world-famous operator, Andrea, and we'll take as many questions as we can. Yes, sir. If you have a question, please press the digit 1 on your touchtone phone at this time. Our first participant is Dave Worry. Please go ahead. Hi, this is Bob with the Dave Worry team at, uh, in Richmond. And um, <clears throat> you may have already covered this, but sometimes I feel that the better job I do in closing for the appointment, the higher my cancellation rate goes. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have to push it. Um, you know, you get more bees with honey, and the offer's got to be, you know, that good that they want it more than you want to give it. So uh, I think James McDonald touched on that. If you find you have to fight with them, if you find you have to be a closer, uh, there's a good chance that uh, they're not going to show up for that appointment. So you might have won the battle on the phone, but if they don't show up for the appointment, did you a little good. So okay. it's, it's, it's all about determining who you should be trying to meet with and then co- communicating an awesome offer. So they want it so badly that they would crawl across broken glass to get it. How about that one, Todd? Well, I broken glass. <laughs> if you'll crawl across broken glass to get it, it's got to be pretty dang good. Well, sometimes so, uh, I feel uh, like... so, Bob, let me hear your offer. I'm a buyer on the phone. Okay. How about that for putting you on the spot? That, I'm, a, I'm a buyer. You've asked me all the right questions. You've asked me all the right questions, and that little voice in the back of your mind says, hey, you know what? I'd like to set an appointment with this Craig guy. He sounds like he's a good buyer. What are you going to say to me? Okay, uh, we can mail you uh, daily updates of all the homes that match your exact criteria from all the real estate companies uh, in Richmond. 
uh, we have a list includes not only all MLS, but also pre-bank foreclosures, bank foreclosures, company-owned properties, and other distress sales. It's free, and of course, you'd never be obligated to buy. Uh, do you think that might interest you? Uh, yeah, I would like to have that. Okay. What we found in fact, we'd like to get together for about 10, 15 minutes face-to-face uh, -to, -face to make sure you don't miss out on any great offers. Are you available sometime uh, this afternoon or perhaps tomorrow to spend a couple minutes with us? Well, look, Bob, can I tell you what I'm looking for over the phone? Okay. We found in the past that that really doesn't work as well. There's over 100 characteristics to the home. It's also a good chance for you to see if you'd like to work with us or if, uh, if we'd like to work with you. So uh, are you available tomorrow or maybe the next day? Okay, what I would suggest instead of uh, talking about working with us, because that's not really a benefit to them at this point, is okay. I would say, uh, I would say, you know, Bob, um, rather than us um, emailing you 100 homes every week, which may or may not match your criteria, or uh, you missing out on the perfect home, if we can get together with you for about 15 minutes, we can take down, a, you know, very carefully exactly what you're looking for, just so we're sending you the exact homes that are a perfect match. Got it. Makes sense. Okay, and then you're not talking about relationships and working with us and commitment because that's what that's what they're hearing is they're hearing commitment. They're hearing working with an agent. Uh, you know, you said you, you know you'll know whether you want to work with us. And right now, as a buyer, I, I don't want any commitment. I just want the list of properties. Got it. That makes sense. They'll they'll learn all about commitment when they when they show up at the office. Okay. Well, and one quick question at the end of this. Um, I recognize the fact that face-to-face -face is the best selling environment, and sometimes I opt for, if I'm not exactly sure if a, if a uh, prospect is, is sincere, I can opt for trying to get them in just so that the better selling environment can work with them, when maybe I should be saying, gee, this person might not be working. Does that make sense? Okay, uh, let me make sure I get the question. You're saying that, that sometimes you're booking an appointment when maybe maybe you should be continuing to follow up with the prospect? Yeah, and it, I'm opting for if I can possibly get them face to face with one of the uh, outside sales folks. That's when we can kind of do the selling. So I guess maybe I'm too aggressive in trying to close the appointment with the idea that face to face we can get something done with them. Yeah, well, you have to be careful. Uh, there's always this tension between inside and outside sales. You know, if um, you know, uh, here's what I say to my inside sales agents: Don't just book an appointment because you can. Because they become so good at it. Like Victor really is so good at it. Like he can probably book an appointment with most of the leads. But then what you hear from the outside sales agents is, well, you know, that appointment that Victor booked was, you know, it wasn't a very, you know, they weren't ready to buy now or they weren't ready to sell. They weren't very qualified. So um, I, I think you, uh, you know, obviously want to respect the outside sales agent's time and don't just book them because you can. You want to make sure that these are, are prospects that are going to, you know, in all likelihood become clients. So it. It, it, all comes to, it all comes down to the questions. It, you know, you ask the questions, you patiently ask the questions, and you have to have this mindset, Bob, that you're the rejector. You've got all this business. You're going to pick and choose who we make the offer to and who we meet with. And, um, um, you, you know, really listening to how they're responding to those questions and being selective with, um, with, with who you um, – who you set appointments with, and making sure that the prospect understands the benefit of actually showing up for the meeting. Very helpful. I appreciate that. Okay, Bob, uh, thanks for coming on the call today. Let's uh, go back to Andrea, take our next caller. If you do have a question, please press the digit 1 on your touch-tone phone at this time. Our next participant is Laura DeFazio. Please go ahead. Laura, your line is open. Okay. We'll go on to Ralph Weiber. Please go ahead. Hi, actually, this is Kelly, um, Ralph's inside assistant. Hello, and, Kelly. Uh, how are you? Very good. I'm feeling in awe. <laughs> I'm in the presence of greatness. Well, you know, <laughs> people people say that about Todd, but I don't believe yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been working with Ralph for probably... Uh, well, it's been a little while, just over a month, and, um, I, you know, with every call that I'm on with you guys, of course, is, is a huge help. Um, the one thing I've been running into, yeah, is um, is the uh, no-shows, and it's, it is mainly on the buyer appointments, and even though I'm sending the confirmation email um, that gives them the um, the contact numbers, to, on who to call, mm -hmm. it's, we're still finding that they're just, some of them are just not 
So is there another way to rectify that or? Well, I'll let Todd handle this one. He's an expert at this. Okay. Right, so, so specifically, what's the problem? Well, it's you send them the confirmation, they're just not showing. And they're not calling to say what, why they didn't show up or anything like that. And then we're finding that it's, well, I'm finding that it's really hard to get back into contact with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once, uh, once we kind of burn them, they're kind of burned. So uh, we've got a, I believe there's kind of really like a four-step system to preventing appointment, appointment cancellations. It's about as far as you can go with it on these buyers. Okay. The first thing is, is that uh, after you set the appointment, while you're still on the phone with the buyer, okay, and then you, you're, you're, you're verifying that you're going to go on the appointment, you're getting their, the general information together, before you hang up the phone, okay, mm -hmm. with the buyer, just reiterate the USP, okay, why you're actually getting together in the first place. Okay. Right, that's step number one. And reiterating USP would be just rearticulating uh, the, uh, the homeowner service. Okay, well, I'm okay. looking forward to seeing you Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. You know, when we get together, we'll be able to take down your exact home buying criteria and start uh, and get you set up to be, to receive pictures, descriptions of all the homes that match exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, right. so I, I, I like to not only repeat it, but I like to say it in a different way than I said it the first time to make sure they get it. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I say it, I, I say it the way it is in the script, and then I'll, I'll repeat it and repeat it kind of in a different way. It means the same thing, but just to make sure they get it. And then I repeat the time and I repeat where you're meeting me at the office. That's Thursday night at seven at the office at Remax. You know why you're coming. Right. Yep. All right. That's and, number one. And we know where you live, so you better show up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. the, now, when you when you hang up the phone and you're getting your uh, you're getting your notes together in agent office, there uh, yes. you want to you want to email a, a confirmation to this buyer, okay? Yes. Uh, you know that uh, hey, you know it was really nice talking to you, really appreciate it. And then in your email, you're going to reiterate the unique selling proposition again, the the homeowner okay. service again, okay? Right. So um, it, it's top of mind for them, okay? And then you know because that's the reason they're coming to the office, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, the third point is that you really want to avoid uh, booking these buyer appointments more than a couple of days out, really. Right. The longer it goes out, just the, the greater the likelihood you're just not going. They're never going to show. Right. And you're going to you're going to start chasing them down again, and and uh, and they end up just avoiding you for whatever reason, you know. Right. Uh, and then I think the number four, the the fourth, the, the fourth thing in this little system that we have, is to uh, follow up with a, another personal phone call. Yes. The morning of the appointment, evening before uh, the actual meeting, and uh, just you know, hey, looking for, just call and let you know we're, we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, and and uh, we'll be there, and uh, look forward to talking to you about you know, pictures, getting pictures, descriptions of all the homes that match exactly what you're looking for. You'll be able to beat out all the other buyers for the hot new right. listings there. So, so what you've done now is you've effectively um, mentioned this homeowner service this unique selling proposition now several times over the last couple of days yes it will cut down on the on the number of people that uh, you know will not show well that's outside great. of that you can you can always bribe them with some yeah. gold with or, some or gold, bread, gold, gold. the gold bricks work well <laughs> hey look guys i i have to go todd uh, you can continue on here i have to run i got another conference call i gotta be on i hope everyone's enjoyed this so far uh but todd will uh wrap this up um most important tip i can leave everyone with is pick up the phone, use the script and start making the calls. Even if you have to read it to begin with, I'd rather you read the script than winging it uh, because winging it's dangerous. Uh, remember, time yourself. You should be on the phone for no more than two minutes, even with the good ones where you book an appointment. So thanks for being with us today. Todd, I'll let you wrap it up. Thanks, Craig. All right, so that's, uh, that's really good. Four-step system for preventing appointment cancellations. And all the Platinum members actually have this in their materials was just uh, – it's, uh, but we need to know it on an individual inside sales agent basis. So right. that'll help you. Thank you uh, so much. Yes, ma'am. No problem. Andrew, anybody else? Yes, sir. Our next participant is Murray McKeach. Please go ahead. Hey, Todd. Hey. Murray McKeach with the Han team in Ottawa. How are you doing? Doing well, man. A um, couple things. First of all, there's, um, there's a program out there. Uh, I was listening when Craig was saying he was looking for something for recording called nch.com that's the company they got some excellent software that you can do and you can trade files back and forth and you can record everything with a 29 dollar device from from uh you know one of the local uh, radio shacks or something if you could do me a favor and you email me that information at todd at toddwalters.net 
because uh, here's here's what I think will make all of us optimally much much more effective and doing a much much better job faster is if we're recording our calls and then uh, of course we're going to listen to them ourselves but more more importantly let somebody else listen to them your team leader another person on your team share these CDs see how we're doing prop prop each other up. Uh, you know, it's it's much more fun being successful when uh, when you can share it with others, and I think taping these calls and and uh, and doing it that way would be a huge benefit. So, well, just, uh, just taping it for yourself and listening to yourself is just amazing. I've done that for myself. I just started this business about a month ago or two or three weeks ago, and and uh, all right. So let me, let me hold on. Let me ask you. So when you listen to these calls, you se- what are you listening to? You just I like listening to yourself like- talk, or what are you? Yeah, we, I just I taped the recording of the call, of the call I had with the client. Okay, uh, and and you're listening to them for what reason? Well, just so I can go back. I also have my uh, my team leader listen to them, which I've done. So you know, she critiques me, and we're able to talk about what I did, didn't do. One of the biggest things that I've I've caught myself not doing is the benefit. You know, the whole benefit um, side of the of the equation it's easy to get the first six questions out of the way and find out whether they're in the market and when and how and whether they're motivated and i don't find that to be difficult at all it's taking all right, so, the next so when you're so when you're listening to these calls um well, it's like this when you're on the phone actually talking to the prospect things are moving pretty quick yeah. um and you know they say something kind of takes you in a different direction or whatever so when you're when you're listening to the calls later on that day the next day you know on your uh, on your cd player uh, you you see that you can hear it and you say wow if I would have said X right. then I I could have um, not just set the appointment sooner but I would have saved myself you know the extra 15 minutes that this lady wanted to talk about. Well, I X. caught myself a couple times, Todd, telling they were calling on a particular property. It was a sign call, and I caught myself telling them that it's conditionally sold, and then that just killed the call. I just that just, they wanted off as fast as they possibly. Oh, sold conditionally sold. Boom, done. I want off. So. You know things like that you catch and you hear yourself on the on when you record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I I can't recommend. So if you can do me a favor, uh, you. just email that to me. I know I can. You know if somebody's familiar with QuickTime because that that's a pretty good program too. I'm recording all the calls easily, but I don't know how to save them into a separate file to email. So yep. if anybody knows that program real well, you can share it with me. Windows. I don't know if Windows Media Player or anything like that allows us to uh, record directly onto our computer. So uh, if anybody's got any uh, ideas, if you're technologically uh, a lot less challenged than me, send me an email. Let me know. i got one other question while I got you, Todd. Um, for for us folks that don't have inside salespeople and that we make our own calls and we book our own appointments. Well, it, that just means you are the inside sales guy. Yeah, that's right. No, but, it, like, it, you know, is, is there anything, you know, in your, you know, that you're, you're, you're you know, it's really hard to... I find, anyways, initially in the first few few or first uh, few weeks, anyways, hard getting yourself into separate roles because really you got to put yourself in the inside sales shoes when you're trying to book that appointment without giving away too much information on the phone because you you know you have a tendency to want to you know to get in there and tell them about a property or talk talk more or do talk more. I guess that's what I've heard from Craig today is you know stop talking and start asking a few questions and, and that's right. See over the phone. Uh, it, well, it, you're just wearing two hats. Over the phone, the, the whole idea is is, that, is to avoid a lot of conversation and get face to face with the prospect, and uh, but not face to face at at the pro- at the house that they're actually calling on because we know what's going to happen when they eliminate that property. They're going to eliminate us. Okay, so operating that way is what I call what I refer to as hoping your way to success. Okay, and I don't know about you guys, but that's never really worked well for me that I hope to be successful, I never really get to where I want to get to. So we got to quit hoping our way to success and actually following the system that we know works successfully. And uh, and that's everything that we've been talking about today. So it does require discipline, but understand that it's two different jobs. There's the front job, the inside job, and then there's the outside job. So the inside job, plain and simple, gauge motivation and timing, Get face to face by offering them something that they'll want so badly they will agree to meet with us. That's it. Good. So uh, keep it up though, and I think you're right. It does take discipline. Thank you. Yeah, man. Anything else, Andrew? Let's see. At this time, we have no further hands raised. Okay. But- All right. No sweat. Then uh, 
we've been on the phone chatting for a while, and this is a great call, and this is kind of what Craig and I wanted to do here was uh, uh, just discuss inside sales, some ins and outs of it, things that are working, things that aren't working, get our discipline and our paradigm right so that we can do a really good job um, each day in, day out. So, and I think that uh, we definitely did that on today's call. So everybody will get a tape of it. You want to listen to it over and over again. And, uh, hey, practice makes perfect. So role playing with, uh, with you know, each other. Don't practice on the prospects. Make sure you have this stuff right before you pick up the phone and start calling these guys. And, uh, and I'm available for uh, as much role playing as, as you guys want to do, especially the guys on my team. So, And we're doing it. But I appreciate everybody calling in today and spending the last hour and a half on the phone working on this. Like I said, this is where the rubber meets the road. We keep working like this, working on this um, every other week this year. No question, we're all going to enjoy what we're doing, be successful at it, have a great time, have a little more freedom as well. After all, money gives us a lot more options. You ever notice that, Ted? Yes, definitely. So when, then when you have more money, you have more options in life? Sure do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you guys uh, go have a great uh, great week. I'll talk to you all next time, our next Inside Sales training call uh, for uh, February. is February 20th, so that's next Tuesday. So I look forward to talking to you guys next Tuesday and uh, work on some role playing. In the meantime, whatever you want to uh, role play and work on, things you're having difficulty with, be sure and send me an email at todd at toddwalters.net. And, uh, and we'll work on it. Thanks for calling, and we'll talk to you n next week. Bye-bye.